Colin Elif, you are uh, joining us here at Tomorrow's Rail. You're, you're, you're representing the organisation High Speed UK, which I suppose is the counter argument to High Speed 2, and you describe it as being different, better, cheaper. Are you making your point? What is your point? Our point is that the UK needs a railway network. It doesn't need a bunch of disconnected high-speed lines. We've got to use the £60 billion that's so far sort of been allocated to high-speed rail in such a way that's actually going to benefit the, all of the UK in a proportionate manner, allowing journeys not just to London faster, right. but actually between all our major cities right. and improving capacity at the now same time. We've been discussing High Speed 2 in Parliament for 19 months now. There's 1,900 uh, petitions. They've, I think they've heard about 500 of them. Are you, is, is, is the bolt kind of, uh, is the horse bolted? Are you, are you a bit late on this? Well, we haven't been late because we've actually been contributing to the process all the way through HS2. And frankly, we've been ignored, effectively because our answers have been couched in the framework of language of a network. And HS2 has been completely focused on the line that it was first remitted to build, right. which had to pass through Old Oak Common. Mm -hmm. And therefore, any more sensible alternative that followed the M1 corridor did far less environmental damage, but was far better configured to actually comprise a national network, mm -hmm. was ignored for right. no good reason whatsoever that we can actually establish. Do you risk, um, I suppose, by, by uh, promoting the, the, this alternative, do you risk uh, there not actually being uh, anything uh, built at, uh, at the end of this whole process? I would actually seriously argue that we have to look at the risks of building HS2 to the national network. Mm -hmm. We're building a two-track main line from London up to the North, Midlands and North and Scotland, which is actually going taking up the functionality of the Midlands, the West Coast and the East Coast route, which collectively comprise between 8 and 12 tracks. We're trying to serve all those cities with two tracks. There is not enough capacity to do it. And we're going to create a new sort of two-tier Britain in which certain cities have high-speed connect rail connections and others don't. And this has been arbitrarily decided and no one's actually having this debate about what comprises a national network, what are the priorities. We would say that there are 16 major cities in that scope of influence of, of High Speed UK or HS2, you know, to the likes of Stoke and Leicester and Milton Keynes and Derby, Sheffield, you know, all of these cities which deserve to be fully interconnected to each other. And if we did that, what we would have is a regional powerhouse. George Osborne's been banging on about the northern powerhouse, but it isn't just a matter of getting the northern economy going, the entire regional economy has got to go made to its function properly. It's got to connect between the UK centres just as well as it does down to London. And if we can get that going, and our, our data, all our route planning, all our timetabling shows something like the order of 40% journey time savings. Now, if this was to happen, this would give us modal shift, which would just put into the shade anything that's currently envisaged. CO2 reductions that actually match our climate change obligations. So when, when you describe poor design and more expensive, I mean, the reality is the the scheme that we have now has come about through a lot of engineering work, a lot of consultation, and it's supported by uh, local authorities across the UK. Um, are you really kind of pushing at a, 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 a firmly locked door? Well, no, because I think there is now a very strong agenda for the Northern Powerhouse. Mm -hmm and the recognition finally that the northern cities need to be properly connected. I would say the Midland cities, the Scottish cities have an equal priority, but our route planning of the northern powerhouse demonstrates that we can actually deliver all the aspired journey times that, that they want, and we can do it actually independent of developing HS2 from London. With the HS2 programme, the risk is that all of these good stuff up north is never going to happen because they're going to have to build this line first, then the Y, and then finally, finally, just finally, we might get the link across the north. Our proposals are completely sectionable. We can say we can build whichever intercity route you want first, and the whole thing still works. HS2, you've got to build that silly six section through the Chilterns first, insane amounts of tunnelling, unprecedented on the UK in City Railway, and only then, when all that's done, might the goodies spread north. Colin, it's an interesting debate, and clearly, uh, with your passion and, and, and your facts and your figures, it's not going to go away, so I, I, I look forward to keeping an eye on where it goes. Thank, Thank you very much, Anthony, yes.